Hi! In the next few videos, we're going to look at different types of Boolean expressions, or conditions, and how they can be used in if statements. In this video, you'll learn how to use comparison operators to compare two things. In the last lesson, you learned that this part of the if statement must be something that evaluates to a Boolean. Take a look at this example. Yelena is competing in the high jump event, and we want to know if she successfully cleared the bar. First, we make two variables one for the height of the bar in meters, and one for how high Yelena jumps in meters. We then use an if statement that uses a Boolean expression with a comparison operator. The expression is highlighted in green. In this case, the expression evaluates to true, so it looks like Yelena is still in the running. In this example, the comparison operator we used was the greater than operator. Operators like greater than can be used to compare two numbers and generate a Boolean value, true or false. Let's take a look at some more operators. And here they are, equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. I want you to pay particular attention to the equal to operator. Notice that this uses two equals signs right next to each other. This is not the same as a single equals sign, which is used in an assignment statement. Single equals is for creating or changing a variable, whereas double equals is used for checking if two things are equal to each other. You're probably going to mix these two up at some point, and don't worry, I've done it too. As we saw with Yelena's high jump attempt, you can use comparison expressions directly in an if statement. In this case, the comparison evaluates to false since 10 is not less than 5, so the else part of the statement is what runs. You can also store comparison expressions in variables, and then you can use the variable in an if statement. Alright, now let's look at this scary looking thing. Now there are three possible pieces of code that the Python interpreter might execute. Each of these pieces of code is called a branch only one of them will ultimately run. The second one, under the word elif, will only execute if the first condition is false and the elif condition is true. The last one, under the word else, will only execute if the first condition is false and the second condition is false. Now I want to talk about how each of the operators we saw in this lesson can also be used to compare two strings. Equal to and not equal to are pretty self-explanatory. Greater than and less than require a bit of explanation. Basically, string 1 is less than string 2 if it would appear earlier in the dictionary. This is a little tricky, because strings can have more than just letters. Here's a semi-complete list of characters that can occur in strings, in the order that Python considers them. You'll be expected to have this memorized by the end of the module. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't think you'll ever be asked to memorize this. But do make note of the fact that digits all come before letters, and all the capital letters come before all the lowercase ones. Okay, editor time? Editor time. Let's write the program where Yelena tries to clear the bar on the high jump. The first thing I'm going to need to do is set the bar. So I'm going to make a variable called height of bar. And the bar is going to be 1.9, oops, 1.9, 1.9, there we go, meters above the ground. And I'm going to print it. Print height of bar. And remember, height of bar is a float, so we need to convert it to a string before concatenating it with height of bar. So stir height of bar. All right, let's test this out to make sure that it prints. There we go, height of bar 1.9. Okay, now we're going to make a variable that represents how high Yelena jumps. So we're going to say Yelena jump equals, and she jumps two meters off the ground. Whoa! So let's print that out too. Yelena's jump. And once again, we should convert the variable to a string. Let's make sure that works. Great. Now we're going to use an if statement to determine whether or not Yelena cleared the bar. So I'm going to say if Yelena jump is greater than height of bar. And I could say greater than or equal to here. But that would mean that she hits the bar, which I don't think is okay in the high jump. So I'm going to say strictly greater than. If Yelena's jump is greater than the height of the bar, then that means she cleared the bar. And I'm going to say so. Yelena jumped higher than the bar. And let's run this. And it says she jumped higher than the bar, which is correct. Now, if I change this to be 1.8, it doesn't print. And what we want is for some print to happen even if Yelena doesn't clear the bar. And we want that print to say something like Yelena didn't jump high enough. 
Now we could say if Yelena jump, we could do the opposite. We could say if Yelena's jump was less than or equal to height of bar, then print Yelena didn't jump higher than the bar. Now if we run this, that's the one that'll print because 1.8 is less than or equal to 1.9. But we can actually make this code a little bit shorter by just turning this into an else. If we say else, then the else branch will only run if the condition in the if branch was not true, which will only be the case if Yelena's jump was less than or equal to the height of the bar. So now if I run this, it should do the same thing.